one, one day till spring. It's a little windy, but I want to take some time and just uh, walk you through uh, what's happening on our suburban site right before spring hits. So the winds come in. It's a little chilly today. Uh, it's been kind of warmed up. We've got a lot of things going on and a lot of things coming into bloom and leafing out. So uh, let's just take a walk around. Let's see where the suburban side is six years in and uh, rocking like a whole air guitar band. <laughs> So this is uh, our, when we moved in, mulberry that was planted by the birds. There's a mulberry uh, way down that way on the end of the block. It's the biggest mulberry I've ever seen. Uh, that was probably planted by birds too. So uh, if we look though, this mulberry, I mean literally this growth just started happening uh, within a week. So these leaves are about a week old and look. I can't believe it myself. This guy is already putting out little fruit. Praise the Lord. So starting kind of on this side, you can kind of see where the support species is at this time during the year. The vast majority of this stuff is perennials, uh, but it's coming through already real strong. This little stand of standing cypress here, uh, you know, get up three, four feet beautiful flowers see that little white moth there that's the cabbage looper munching away a little bit on these uh, on these kale uh, that we're probably about to harvest and juice and uh, that is the reason the support species is so beneficial uh, those moths get a jump on spring before any of the wasps or any of the beneficial insects come so those kale get a little eaten got tiny holes in it but it's already starting to warm up and, and wasps are out. Gotta love my stool. You know, look at this big keyhole on, on part of this mandala here. Uh, big shout out to Steve Walensky. Uh, he was in town for a while, came and uh, took an intro and also brought my wife some daffodils. And those have been at, uh, at a local nursery site here. Um, I wanna say 80 years. So we've got some really good stock going on there. Thanks Steve, you rock. Uh, we got some emmer wheat we're trialing uh, this year. Got a little bit of good growth on it uh, going here. And on this side of the bed, we got some corn. Obviously utilizing, you know, away from that shade, but that's way south. Wheat, a little bit smaller than corn. And then we got some pole beans uh, back here that will take over this trellis, along with uh, Malabar spinach. And we're gonna let them trellis up these corn as well. Looks like the only thing we're missing here is squash, or is it? Okay, so we were just looking at that side, and then back here, kind of where the, well, the mulberry was, uh, on this side, these little green, I mean, they look just like radishes. This is kind of freaking me out a little bit, but these are uh, chia, so uh, really good omega-3s there, especially for, for baby girl. Get both uh, uh, meat and, and plant omega-3s. Very healthy, but, um, but that, is at the very northern side, you know, right before the mulberry, because those get really tall and bushy. It's gonna get exciting in here, uh, here in a few weeks. We've got also on this side, sweet potato. So if you watch a couple videos back, I did a video on how to create a bunch of sweet potato slips with not a lot of work. Uh, so we're in instead, this time, uh, because last time I did it in flats, this time we're doing it right in the ground. So go check out that video. Uh, a couple videos back, you can see that epic method there. And we're still a little early, but we went ahead and put some melon seeds in. We got watermelon coming up this side, and uh, cantaloupe coming on that side. A little bit of marshmallow coming back from last year, and uh, we're, we're most likely going to utilize this. You know what? We'll just save that for another video. Dun 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 dun. Oh yeah, cabbage, right here, Shh. all the way around, hanging out with these onions. Now I've got to get a shout out to uh, Jennifer Roshmeyer. Uh, she had an epic idea. We trialed it out this last weekend during our permaculture gardening course, and uh, wow, we've got an outdoor classroom. Not quite finished yet, but it works really well. Perfect location, 
here in a little microclimate underneath the neighbor's trees. Uh, you know, everybody seemed to just naturally congregate around the edges here. We've got tables, uh, boards in the back, uh, perfect utilization of space, which was originally designed to be a dog run. Dogs never used it. Thanks, Jennifer. Alas, just look at the beauty. These, these guys, let's go get closer. These are sorrel. These are French sorrel. Have a really lemony flavor. Uh, these are perennials. I probably put them in three years ago and I've tried to kill them. And look how healthy they are. They're coming back just amazingly. I mean, I need to take a bite. I mean, seriously, seriously, they're absolutely amazing. I like a lemon, lemon leaf flavor. Better than lemongrass. Okay, so turn around. We're utilizing every pocket, right? Microclimate back there. Got strawberries going. Strawberries have flowered. Got to paint some little red rocks so we can uh, disguise the strawberries and the birds and squirrels will get tired of trying to pounce on some of those rocks. Over here, uh, got some beets and some radishes. Uh, got three rows coming up. Those are seeded out a little while ago. Turning around, we've got uh, kale. So kale is so tough. So these were spread out actually last fall and I just threw the packet out. And look how good looking they are. Oh, and oh, if we could see it right there, check that out. Yeah, you see this little fly hovering around right there. Actually, that's what he is, he's a hover fly. So he's getting any of those aphids that are hanging out getting that early fresh nectar uh, early spring fresh nectar. But look at that, packet of seeds, all of that is really good, really robust. Uh, we do juice fasting, so highly uh, recommend growing your own kale. Uh, some red Russian uh, ragged jack kale going, over on, going on over here. Uh, some more corn, more corn. And, and along this, uh, this greenhouse, it's facing south, uh, we've got this cattle panel with um, pole beans going up there as well. Now, we kind of step back for a second. If we look over, this system all kind of talks to each other. Here's an apple coming right into bloom. You know, we've got some leaves, and apple flowers are probably my favorite tree flowers. So right now, you know, it's uh, just waking up, so still pretty much asleep, so you can see deciduous time, no leaves, right? There's no beans on here, so it opens up directly, lets the sun in to that greenhouse. Super rad. And uh, here in just a few weeks, that's gonna be filled out. The sun's gonna get higher in the sky. These beans are gonna come up, help shade and help protect the greenhouse so it's not so hot. So we're using biological uh, shade and uh, solar aspect. Super cool. So right next to this apple, We've got this nectarine. I think I should name him. Look how he look how he grew. He's just crooked. Total shout out to anybody who wants to name this nectarine. But aren't these flowers just gorgeous? Nectarine flowers are amazing. And then from below that, again, we've got uh, some more beets and radishes. We got three rows circling this whole keyhole here. And last year, this keyhole had potatoes in it, and I, you could tell I didn't harvest them all. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to let these guys go or not because uh, I'm sure he'll harvest me more potatoes, but he may get in the way of my, my little beets and radishes. Being a lazy gardener sometimes pays off. Circle around a little bit, boom. These also spread out just on the top of the surface. These are giant leaf spinach. This is amazing spinach. Uh, the taste is absolutely amazing. It completely covers the area where it's at. 
you know, right here before it's too hot, you know, definitely harvesting these, using them in our eggs, juicing, really good flavor. And you only need a couple leaves if you want to eat them raw for a, for a sandwich or a wrap. On the other side of the pathway, get my shadow out of the way, starting to introduce garlic. Got garlic right next to it, starting to come up a little bit of uh, cilantro. See the little guys here? Hey cilantro, what up man? And then next to that, this monstrosity, already putting on flowers, this is the goji berry. Cue the music. No, seriously, uh, I got this one from Steve Kreisinger, who is uh, just like us, just an absolute nutter on, uh, on growing food. Actually, his wife was ill, so he ripped out all his yard, started growing his own food. Way to go, man, you're a rock star. And also, it gives me at least two, maybe three, bumper crops a year and then all year long it's always producing these flowers kind of like you see it now and it's it's pretty much ever bearing until the first frost obviously it's perennial it loses its leaves the leaves are also edible we'll do a whole nother uh, video just on goji but here's the funny thing uh you know if you're running a nursery that sells support species he's not shy i would say just be a little gentle or with your decision making when it comes to uh, where you want to put this goji, because he'll start escaping. Shh. Giant garlic, elephant garlic, more garlic over here, letting the hen bit kind of uh, hang out in between, get a little peppery, leafy, weedy green. And if I turn around, we got the food for us, excuse the big metal gutters. We just got a new metal roof on. Uh, as you guys probably know. How cool is that? A whole video about that. Uh, we've got this uh, naturalized cherry. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this guy is gonna perform. So this is his, I believe, third year at our site. Uh, naturalized uh, from Gainesville, Texas. And um, really looking forward uh, to seeing how he's gonna do here in straight up Blackland Prairie. Gainesville is a little unique uh, area of soil type there. Next to it, look, we've got jujubes. Jujube leaves coming on. This is a beautiful tree. The little soft and then all of a sudden you get into some spikes here. I heard from a uh, from a pastor friend that this was the tree that could have been the corn of uh, sorry, the crown of thorns that they gave Jesus, King of Kings. Hey Koi, how's it going? Don't be scared. We've got some uh, water clover coming back up, duck potato, uh, bulrush coming back to life over here. Aquatic uh, species will be coming back pretty soon. Pomegranate, still dormant, hasn't come out of uh, hibernation. Come back over, we got brambles still with green on. Uh, they're pretty much evergreened almost the whole winter. Not seeing any flowers yet. Coming over here, look on the other side. Look at the size of these mulberries. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Now this was a special, uh, specialized uh, grafted mulberry. And he's only been in a year. Mulberry, the hardiest of all fruit trees. Absolutely amazing. So you know what's funny, uh, this apple is uh, throwing out some leaves as we can see. But I put this apple the same time I put that apricot, at least I think I did. And uh, hmm, what's going on here? Not sure, but he didn't sprout up, but he does uh, still like it here. Uh, provides for that other apple over there. Thank you, buddy. And you can see here next to him, his apricot friend. Uh, we had a bumper crop of flowers this year, coming all up. Apricot, right next to the apricot we got a peach. Right next to the peach we've got a plum back there. All of them flowered heavily and you can still see the peach uh, still got quite a number of flowers on it. Coppiced and chop and dropped mimosa tree, that's pretty cool. Still asleep. 
turn around, persimmon, got a pineapple guava, bajoa, evergreen, stayed green all uh, all winter long. Right next to that, we've got uh, we got a fig. Let's see if he's coming back. Still not warm enough for him to come back from the root. Hopefully he survived this winter. He's new. We've got a pawpaw back here. He's also new. Come back to the greenhouse. Some oxalis. Uh, everybody calls it a weed, which it is. It's undesirable. But it's also uh, edible, especially little seeds. Get them when they're young, make a little oxalisate out of it. It's like a tiny, tiny cucumber with a citrus punch. Totally awesome. So look, we're utilizing flats. We eat a lot of onions. These are awesome onions. Uh, just planted some of that cabbage out there. Right. We got Swiss chard, <coughs> broccolis, a couple types of awesome uh, uh, tomatoes. We got pickling cucumbers, uh, more melons, carrots, cauliflower. Uh, cauliflower will be seeded a little late over here. Uh, we got some chilies and peppers coming up as well. We also just got this uh, uh, rigged in the the misting system, so this will be very interesting. So you can see it's beautiful right before, literally the day before spring, right? Everybody's spirits are uplifted. Uh, we're also coming in from Landon from a great course a couple of days ago. Uh, so we're feeling really good. Put in a huge system, but but some differences between uh, you know I guess what we're looking at like a traditional now that we can say traditional permaculture site next to like a market garden or something that's mainly for profit. There's a, there's there's overlap, but there's focus that's majorly different. So where in a market garden, you're probably not going to be growing your potatoes and sweet potatoes. There's just not a lot of uh, money in it, not, not a ton of money if you're looking at, you know, even just an acre, uh, trying, to, trying to fit that into your acre market garden. And the fact that it takes a long time to get a harvest, especially from sweet potatoes. So you, you know, you're, you're waiting a long time and you're not making a ton of money. It's not something that most market gardeners want to do. They're willing to wait a little while if they can make lots of money. Uh, like for example, John Martin Fortier is averaging around $36,000 a year on four 100 foot rows of greenhouse tomatoes. What? That's amazing, right? Obviously some uh, love and care going to those. So you have tomatoes and lettuces, you know, you're, uh, relatively high-end uh, buyers are going to be buying up all your crops there. You're not going to be looking at, you know, getting tons of uh, money off of the potatoes and sweet potatoes if you're going that route. However, let's switch back over to homesteading though, right? So it's not all about making money from that realm. What about saving money, not having to uh, work so hard and pay the middleman to go for work, right? So you notice on our site, now we did have, you saw there's tomatoes in there, we've got peppers, we got onions, all those are, uh, uh, you know, you gotta take care of them a little bit in the nursery so you can put them out. But the vast majority of what we're growing here on this site is some straight up traditional permaculture. So we're in a temperate climate, so we're looking for those storage crops that'll last us for a long time, right? We got corn, we got beans, wheat will even do it. So even though it's a, it's a test crop, but you know, uh, if I do a little bit more, that will store. Um, and by the way, that wheat's an emmer wheat and has a completely different gluten uh, Completely different gluten <laughs> and you know we're looking at uh, uh, potatoes and sweet potatoes so all of these crops will give you lots of calories and they're all tasty right they could all taste really good and they'll store for a relatively long time so uh, make sure you're 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 looking at things from a context that's like okay I'm also lessening my need to earn by growing stored crops if you're uh, especially if you're in temperate climate and as well you can add on uh, market garden uh, levels and, 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 and integrate those so you guys are awesome man always love chatting with you always love you hey you like this stuff 
I love it. We're, we're not going to stop. So we're here to, to, to spread as much uh, information and as much love as we can. So we love you guys. You rock. I put a blessing on you. And some giggles. <laughs>